Uh, but Minsky had begun uh, warning that our financial system had evolved over the whole post-war period to become extremely fragile. And he was writing uh, working papers at the Levy Institute and actually had started a, a new book that he wasn't able to complete before his death in which he argued we need to reconstitute the financial system. We need it to completely reform the financial system. And, um, uh, of course, he died in 96. The crisis didn't uh, occur until 2007, um, so 10 years after his death. So he wasn't around when the crisis hit. But a, a few people, including George <laughs> Magnus, who was in the video, uh, Cassidy, John Cassidy was in the video, and Paul McCulley, who worked at PEMCO, all immediately said, this is a Minsky crisis. And so people like Krugman started rereading Minsky, or maybe reading Minsky for the first time. And um, Minsky, uh, again, uh, got the um, recognition that he would uh, deserve. So Terry Jones uh, decided to do a video um, on Minsky and, uh, as you saw, Galbraith. Um, he lined up a bunch of interviews. He came to Harvard, and I was interviewed there. So was Steve Keen at Harvard. And um, he basically had two choices on, on how, what direction to go with this movie. One would have been much more Minskyan. It would have dealt with this long-term evolution of the financial system and of the economy from relative stability in the 1950s to very fragile in the 1990s and then a collapse in, in the 2000s. Or he could have gone the direction that he actually went, which is to focus on bubbles, bubble mania and you know the history of speculative excesses. And uh, I think that that is a, a weakness of the movie in terms of presenting Minsky. Uh, probably it's a, a benefit in terms of getting an audience. Because it's a, it's a lot of fun, the tulip mania stuff and all that. But I, you shouldn't think that, that what has been presented here is doing um, a, a perfect or you know, fantastic job of presenting Minsky's own uh, approach uh, to the transformation of the economy. When the crisis hit, I said, it's not a Minsky moment, it's a Minsky half century. Minsky was describing these long run processes that would um, make it, a Great Depression, possible again. In the early post-war period, he said, a depression is not possible in the early post-war period because we have put in place a framework that ensures that it cannot happen again. But by the 90s, he started saying, actually, now it can happen again. So we crash. Like, and this was a systemic crash. It wasn't just a bubble that crashed like a tulip bubble. This was a systemic crash. It was a crash of the entire economic system crash in 2007. In the same way that the entire economic system crashed in 1929. In 1929 when we crashed, that's, that stage of capitalism was called finance capitalism by Minsky, and he borrowed the term from Hilford Inc. That system disappeared. It was gone. We created a new kind of capitalism in the 1930s with the New Deal, with uh, very tight regulations on the financial system, creating a social safety net, um, having a government that became very much larger. When the uh, crash came in 1929, the U.S. federal government was 3% of the economy. We came out of World War II, it was 25% of the economy. When we crashed in 1929, the, the Fed probably made things worse rather than coming to the rescue of the financial system. Okay? 
skip forward to the crash in 2007. The government in the United States, again, was 20, over 20% 20 of the economy, and the Fed intervened with $29 trillion of loan originations. You heard me right, $29 trillion of loan originations. It dwarfed anything that they did in the Great Depression. Unfortunately, we saved this kind of capitalism. Okay? Instead of letting it fail and creating a new kind, this time we propped it back up, patted it on the back, said, good job, go do it again. And they're out there doing it again. Um, they, they talk about bubbles and crashes. Uh, I have a friend named Frank Veneroso who um, has studied uh, bubbles and, and crashes and says, typically what happens, you have a bubble, a crash, and then you might get an echo bubble. Okay? You can crash and then people say, oh, well, it wasn't as bad as we thought. And you can get uh, an echo bubble of that. It usually only goes to about two-thirds the size of the first bubble. Uh, this time, we had a bubble and crash, the dot-com bubble and crash. We had the 2007-2008 bubble and crash. And in between, we had an echo bubble. And now we are back in a bubble that dwarfs the bubble we saw in 2008. The bubble this time is very much bigger. And it's, uh, in 2008, it was simultaneously commodities markets, stock market, and housing market. Now it's true, the housing market is not bubbling yet, but it, has re it is recovering in the United States. But the stock market and commodities market bubbles were bigger than they were in 2007, 2008. So we propped it up, we bubbled again for the third time, which apparently is the, the first time ever this has happened. Um, and uh, we're, we did not reform the financial system. Uh, we are poised for another crash because we did not change the kind of capitalism.